Um, if the SNP win the majority of Scottish seats at the next election, is this a mandate for another referendum on independence? Well, considering the mandate that the SNP have specifically states that if there was circumstantial and material change, such as Scotland being taken out of Europe against its quote-unquote will, then the Scottish Government should have the right to hold a second independence referendum. And given that the SNP are still continuing to make the claim that they intend to stop Brexit as one of their campaign policies, they themselves acknowledge that we've not been taken out of the European Union against our quote-unquote will, nor has the UK left Europe. Hamza? We already have a mandate for another <laughs> independence referendum. We have a mandate because, of course, in the 2016 elections to the Scottish Parliament, we stood on a manifesto that said, literally, you can check it, go online. It says that if we, if we were elected and if Scotland was dragged out of the European Union against its will... And have we been taking our Europe against our will? <laughs> Thanks for resting my case for me, Hamza. Then we would have the right for another referendum. Not only that, the Scottish Parliament, by majority, has voted for another independence referendum. And who the heck does Boris Johnson think he is? Coming here, coming here, flying into Scotland, having a dram. Tories haven't won an election here in Scotland for over 60 years. And look, I respect the fact that in this question time audience, some of the audience is going to be pro-independence, some of the audience, of course, is going to be anti-independence. But surely... This is, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, listen to this wanker. This is no longer about unionists and pro-independence supporters. This is about unionists and pro-European Union supporters. Effectively, anti-Brexit and pro-Brexit, in effect. There is no pro-independence when it comes to the European Union. And everybody outside of the Powerpuff Party's bubble can fucking see this. They have subverted the desire for independence and the movement itself as a means to avoid the permanent removal of European Union membership, potentially. They are literally now just treating independence as a stepping stone to try and get back into the European Union. <laughs> to heck, we are all Democrats. That We're all Democrats coming from somebody who's part of the SNP who have a campaign pledge to try to stop Brexit on top of the fact that for the past three years they've been doing nothing but trying to stop Brexit. Really democratic, really reeks of democracy, that one. If the Scottish Parliament votes for another independence referendum, if Scotland sends a whole swathe and a slate of SNP MPs, then surely and any Democrat, whether you're yes or whether you're no, it should be for the Scottish people to decide uh, their future, not some arrogant, out of touch Tory MP that has PM that has no mandate here. That's great. You know, people really need to wisen up to this absolute bollocks on display here. Yet again, the SNP do nothing other than lying because thin lips has told them to. They don't want that whip removed now. He is just after saying that they have a mandate. And in spite of that, they are, there's been no indication that permission for a second referendum would be granted. So if having a mandate wasn't enough, why the fuck would obtaining more seats in any upcoming election change anybody's minds? Not to mention, if they've got a mandate, the amount of seats that they obtain or lose should be irrelevant. And let's not forget just how they obtained this mandate to begin with. Thin lips coming out to tell her independent supporters that they needed to vote to remain if they had independence in mind, to which they did. They voted the way she told them to, believing her promises of a second referendum later on down the line, only to see this idea shelved a fucking year later, only to then re-emerge two years on, meaning now, with the additional requirement all of a sudden that never existed three years prior, that her promise could only be fulfilled if Westminster granted them permission. How can nobody see what's going on here? <laughs> this idea of requiring permission removes responsibility and redirects the blame elsewhere. So if they're unable to fulfill this promise, they essentially get to walk away from it all scot-free. Scot Part of my non-intentional pun. Voting for them in this election will not do a damn thing apart from ensure that they retain and obtain power. I mean, think about it. Just think about it. You all vote for Thin Lips. They then obtain a majority again only to see their request denied. The SNP would then have the power that they were initially after, while the anger generated from heartbroken promises and deceit are redirected down south to 
towards Westminster. Rather clever little scheme they've got going, don't you think? The woman there in the glasses. Um, Barry Gardner says that he's devastated at the idea of Scotland leaving the United Kingdom. I think a lot of Scotland are devastated at leaving the EU against their will. And, and, in 2014, I was a very avid no voter, but if I was given the vote again, I would want to be independent if it meant that we would be in the EU. Give me a... <laughs> Just give me a break. The woman at the very back. The woman at the very... OK, let's hear from you, and then we'll hear from the woman behind you. Um, I, I just very much like to echo what the, the lady has said. Um, I'm devastated at the thought of Scotland leaving the EU. <laughs> well, you can always point out... There's four different groups of people in the Question Time audience, right? Or in the Specifically, when we're talking about let's say, the SNP or Scotland, you'll have people in the crowd that are pro-European Union, but they can think for themselves. You'll have people in the crowd that are pro-European Union, but can't do anything but regurgitate and reiterate Nicola Sturgeon's talking points. Then you'll have people that are anti-European Union, or anti-SNP, or anti-independence, whatever it may be, and they can think for themselves. And you will also have people in the crowd that are anti SNP, anti-independence, etc, etc. But they will hang off every word that the Tories or Labour will say. And <laughs> this woman doesn't even need to finish her sentence. And I just know right off the bat that this is your stereotypical Nicola Sturgeon diehard. The demigod that is Sturgeon. This is one of her worshippers. The people of Scotland were promised in 20... Oh, the promise. The claim of a promise. <laughs> 2014 that if we voted to remain within the United Kingdom that we would remain within the EU. Why the fuck do people believe the nonsense that Nicola Sturgeon peddles? She has rewritten history to bolster her campaign in order to justify her tirade, in order to try and convince and dupe the public of Scotland to come on board with what she is trying to say in order to get a future that Nicola Sturgeon wants to see Scotland in. This is Nicola Sturgeon's vision. This is Nicola Sturgeon's lies. This is Nicola Sturgeon's campaign. But yet people seem to be jumping willingly on board. There was no promise made that Scottish voters needed to vote to remain in 2014 in the United Kingdom in order to stay in Europe when it was made crystal clear that there was going to be an EU referendum potentially if David Cameron was re-elected. Second of all, I recall pretty clearly that the SNP initially bullshitted the public of Scotland by making out that we would inherit EU membership, as I keep repeating in every single video, because the same talking points seem to keep coming up every time the SNP are allocated airtime. The SNP made out we would inherit EU membership if we voted to leave the UK. We would inherit the UK's EU membership. The EU came out and dismissed this. So the EU then, no, so the, so the SNP then came out with a white paper. And in this white paper, it specifically stated that in the event of an independ uh, independence coming back as the major uh, majority in a referendum, the SNP would seek to re-enter negotiations with the UK and the EU to try and rejoin the European Union. Now, if you point to an SNP MSP and you say to them that an independence referendum, the re independence referendum of 2014 would have seen Scotland as an independent nation out with Europe. They'd be quick to remind you that they had every intention of rejoining Europe. So with that in mind, with the white paper in mind, and the deception and lies from the SNP themselves on the matter, it's pretty safe to assume that the EU was not really an integral talking point or a point of contention when it came down to people making their choice on that ballot paper. This idea that people were promised that they would get to stay in Europe if they voted to stay in the UK in 2014 is a lie that didn't exist before the latter half of last year, early this year, when Thin Lips decided to peddle it. She rewrit history and everybody seems to have jumped on board and made this claim, this fabricated falsehood, a reality. <sighs> And it was done deliberately to bolster and reinforce this campaign of deception. If it was the case 
that the only way to stay within the European Union and protect that integral and vital membership was to vote to remain in 2014. And all of a sudden, as we see today at present, the subversion and redefining of the independence movement to be all about European Union loyalty. Then explain to me why people even voted for independence in 2014. Why did anybody at all vote for independence in 2014? Because a lot of these same people, the, fifth, the 45, who have all conveniently forgotten history, must have by this logic voted for independence, knowing full well that it was going against the protection of EU membership. Why did anybody bother voting for independence the first time round? If it's always been about the European Union, why did anybody bother voting for independence? <laughs> Such shit. That is now not the case, therefore I do not understand how um, the Westminster government can turn down a request for a second and rent. Because you do not have a mandate. If the SNP were really that interested in independence, they wouldn't have wasted three years near enough trying to stop Brexit, trying to stop the UK leaving the European fucking Union. And now, as I said already, they have deliberately rewritten history for a multitude of different f reasons. One, of course, being this pledge, this promise of a second independence referendum. They're now making out that permission is required. And you've fallen for it. Who Klein and fucking sinker. <laughs> Another classic case of SNP deception. Another classic case of slack-jawed followers. Peace.